What is going on, everybody? And thanks again for joining us here on Expanded Perspectives. Uh, yeah, it's it's your boy. It's me. It's Cam Hale over here drinking some Perrier Lime Fizzy Water. Mm-hmm. And joining me, as always, the man in high school known as the king of the Porta John threesomes, Mr. Kyle Filio Filson. How's it going, folks? Big Fizzy is here. Yes, I'm enjoying this Perrier. I have a Le Orange Perrier today. And Cam is drinking... Lime. Lime flavor. And also have something I have never tried before. Now the bowl is empty. <laughs> Kyle shows up and he brings me these grapes. And he's like, you got to try these grapes. And I'm like, yeah, I've had a grape. He's like, no, 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 you got to try these grapes. Well, right off the bat, I'm suspicious anytime Kyle tries to get me to eat anything. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, I'm going for it. They taste like cotton candy, folks. I've never, uh, surely they're not GMO. They can't be genetically modified uh, cotton candy flavored grapes, can they? I they, mean, surely they're healthy. They have to be, <laughs> right? Because you would have heard about it before. I've been eating grapes. I'm a big lover of grapes. And, and uh, Is it the shape and the roundness that you like exploding in your I mouth? I even like or when they the ferment fact? and become wine. I mean, I like grapes of all, all kinds. I like raisins. I like watching people stomping and making grapes and then fall off. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Remember that yeah. video from that lady? That's a classic, yeah. right? Oh, well, help. <laughs> Uh, and our kids eat them a lot. So they always have these grapes. Well, my wife went to Central Market, and uh, which is like a, a ritzy, fancier version of a grocery store. Yeah, yeah. Everything in there is not cheap, okay? Like when you go in there, if you just need to pick up some bread and a, uh, a gallon of milk. Get ready. That's probably 85 bucks. I don't know. What, <laughs> but, but but they do have some really good food there, right? But like yeah. you couldn't afford to just do all of your grocery shopping. No. There. But they always have these specialty things, whether it's cheeses or meats. You know, and she you, found these. She found these, and it says right on the on the box, cotton candy grapes. Now, these are the white grapes. They look just like the normal green ones you find in your grocery store. These taste exactly like cotton candy. It's crazy. Get them away from me. You can't stop eating them. Well, how many do you think you ate, if I was to ask you? Because I know you've Bushels been, or individual grapes? <laughs> I know you've been watching a lot of the NHL playoffs. Yeah. And I'm assuming that you are eating these grapes- like nervous energy eating these grapes. Oh yeah, I was going through them. How like, many would you guess you've you've consumed? I've over consumed the last five three days? bushels this week. <laughs> Each bushel containing probably a hundred to one hundred and fifty grapes on it. One hundred to one hundred fifty thousand grapes is what you're it's telling all me. I've been eating. <laughs> <laughs> that and drinking fizzy water. I bet you can't sneeze, or you have to cut them underwear off. These Mac those. Weldons get cut right <laughs> off. As many grapes. Might have to use eaten. these bombuses to help clean up. That's right. Yeah, man, they're good, oh. but I don't. I, they're not available all year. We found them um, like two years ago, I think we found them was the first time, and then we've been looking ever since, and they're just never in season. So I'm, I'm with you. Where the heck? Because it they, takes years in a lab to grow them. You know, where are they making them? Uh, this is probably the, the same people that grow these are probably the same people like those crazy dudes up in like Colorado or whatnot that grow those giant pot plants and stuff you always see on the news. Like They always come up with those crazy... What are the names of, you know, they have all these crazy names Come for on, all those you know weed the plants. Come no, on, you know the, the only on. one I can remember. Wait a minute. Come on. You know I had one. Hold on. I had one. It was just in my mind. There was one that you and I laughed about at one time. It was like, what was it? Sour Diesel? It wasn't that one. I remember that one. Was it like the Afghan White Widow or something like that? I forgot what it <laughs> yeah, was. I think you're close. Yeah. It's got to be something along those lines. That those are the people that grow these cotton candy grapes. Yeah. I mean, it's some mad scientist in the... But they're delicious. They are. They so are very if, delicious. I don't know if they're only available to Texas. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a grape connoisseur. And like, you know, I told you I really like grapes, but I just, I don't think anymore. Usually drink drinking your them. grapes. Yeah, usually I'm drinking them. <laughs> um, I don't know if they're, if you can get them everywhere. I don't know. But look for cotton candy grapes, man. They are really They are jam up. I good. was blown away by it. Yeah. Yeah, so what have yeah, you been yeah. doing, man? I know. We haven't got to talk all week. I know. I've Dude, been so swamped. I've been hammered. You've been hammered. We've just been so busy. Literally, Kyle and I talk all the time. We didn't This week, we haven't even got a chance to talk. Like, maybe less than five minutes. Like, it's been nothing. Just go, 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 go. Uh, I have been working like crazy and trying to get everything done. Of course, the weather has been excellent. We've been dodging the storms yet again. We thought we were going to get hit yep, with several yep. hell. We got three inches of rain in one night. Like we've, it's, it's been wild. Of course, it's going to be wild around here, but just with work being busy and they are back in my office again, since all the work's done in there and we did all well, that's that. Right, so, they're remodeling. Yeah. They got it all done. And so we got everything moved back and getting back into the groove of using it again and then doing stuff around the house. It's just been, it's been crazy. So yeah, now we're pumping out some more shows and yep. getting all this done. And then you, you've got more to go do. We got all kinds of stuff going on. So yeah, yeah it uh, snuck up on me. 
Let's get into yeah, the yeah, news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lay it on me. Uh, check this out. This is pretty cool. This because over there posted on Phantoms of Monsters, our good buddy Lon Strickler over there constantly sends me emails and stuff whenever he's got cool stories. Uh, we share back and forth. If you go on that website, you'll also find yep. uh, listener stories sent to us that I forward over to Lon. Uh, but this is a pretty cool story because I remember one time we did an episode about the ant people. Like, yeah, I'm trying I to remember, remember like, that. The, the, I think it was the <clears throat> Hopi Indians. Yeah. Uh, had these legends of these ant people coming out of the ground, and people have theorized if what they were really looking at were alien greys because of the large almond-shaped black eyes. If you think about it, looking at it head on, if you were trying to describe it to somebody and you only had a limited vocabulary to the animals and things that you see, you might describe it as ant-looking. I mean, they kind of look like an ant, I guess. You know what I mean? Yeah. But anyway, so there's a, there's a history with this, but um, this person is claiming that they had an encounter with something that resembled an Ant-Man. They say, When I was a young child of about three, in 1965 or so, I started having dreams about once a month that there were these big ants in my room walking upright like people and coming to the side of my crib and looking at me. I remember one morning my dad was getting ready to go to work at around 5 a.m. I ran into the kitchen where he and my mother were standing drinking their coffee. My dad picked me up and sat me on the kitchen counter and asked me how I had gotten out of my crib. Well, I told him, the big ant man let me out. Now, I'm not saying I was abducted by aliens or anything like that, but this did happen for about a year, and my parents were finding me sleeping all over the house, once in the Rambler, in the carport, so they started tying me down at night in my crib, and every time I got out, and I don't ever remember getting out on my own or anyone else letting me out except for the one time. I'm in my late 50s now, and I remember this clearly, but I would never say that I thought I was abducted by aliens. Some of the circumstances could suggest a possibility of it. As soon as you even mention in seriousness that you have a feeling or that you know you have been in contact with beings not of this world, you're going to be labeled as crazy or a weirdo, and then life can become even harder for the person living with this kind of thing. Now, I'm not saying that I did have some kind of contact with beings other than humans. I don't know, because I don't have any vivid memories mm -hmm. of being taken anywhere out of my house, even when I was sleeping in the car. What I remember is what could most likely have been a reoccurring dream of a human-sized ant or ants being in my room and the hallway of our house leading to the other bedrooms. What kind of bugs me is that the more I think about it, the more I think they could know that I'm thinking about them. <laughs> could they have been the greys and I wasn't dreaming. The problem here is that I have been exposed to media all of my life, and I can't tell if it is just my mind remembering things this way or my thoughts have been influenced by the media reports I've seen on TV and television and podcasts and things like that. I still wonder what happened to me and why I can remember it all these years later. So that's interesting. This, this is the first time that I've heard of somebody... Um, thinking that alien greys were abducting them and, and confusing them with ants. But like I said, we've covered stories in the past where mm -hmm. people have compared the greys with the aliens because there's all these stories, remember, that the the greys have these secret bases underground. Mm -hmm. that they're, uh, you know, all these, whether it's Dulce, New Mexico, which is a secret base built underground, or, or uh, Philip Schneider, remember, he apparently had a battle underground yeah. with these things and they shot something out of its chest and... Burn the the special forces Green Beret guy that was with him burned his hand off. Yeah, or, you know. So are these things really living underground? These I just admire their honesty. Going, I don't know if it's my mind filling in the blanks with the things that I've seen on television. Well, that is that's a, most yeah, people don't. Th that's hard for a lot of people that have a sighting or a, a, a memory like that to to think about. Because our brain has a way of doing that. You fill it in with things. Fills, yeah, fills up any gaps. Yeah, and you have so to wonder, it, is what you're seeing because of what you've already seen on TV and stuff, that that's what yeah. you... Yeah, because I definitely know that happens. Well, because I never had a dream it. ever about Grays until my dad and my dad's friend showed me that book Oh yeah, about Communion. aliens, and I saw the Grey, the, the artist rendition of what it was. So ever since then, then I would have nightmares sometimes, and that was what they did. That's what they would look like. Yeah, if you have a nightmare of 
Jason Voorhees or Freddy Krueger in your dream. It's of course exactly what you watched on television. Yeah. It wasn't like that was happening prior or Although, your rendition of it. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, I don't know, man. It's, it's creepy. At least she's not having them anymore. Well, it's, I think there's a, a lot to it as far as the way our memory works is filling in because you and I have discussed it to where you'll have an, a memory of something and then you'll talk to somebody else that was there and they'll be like, that's not yeah, really how right? it went You've down. Had memories. Yeah. And you're like, wait, what? You actually misremember yeah. it. Yeah. 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 I, it sounds to me like it's, a, an, if it's an anything, there's any validity to anything she's discussing, it would be more of an alien abduction. That's what you wouldn't like just have like an ant man show up, you know. And then there's also the the stories where supposedly the grays can change the way they look to you. That's so true. Sometimes they look That's like true. an owl, or yeah, they somehow have some kind of control over your brain. But it does seem like sometimes they still mess up. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And those are like some. You need to have a. We need to do a whole episode on people or aliens botching when they're yeah uh, alien abductions like screwing up. Remember, and this happens even in the fairy realm. It's like yeah. oh, some they you see him and they're like, oh crap, he can see us. Somebody messed up. What yeah. happened? Yeah, and then they exactly. like turn into a rock or something. <laughs> that's right. Roll off like that's one of those right. crites from the movie Critters. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Which yeah. is uh, I forgot about that movie until Luke started watching it months ago. How many times have you seen it? I haven't watched it, but I've caught parts because it's like, Dad, look, Dad, look, Dad, look. Yeah, which. The Multiple new Godzilla times. movie's coming out, so now Walmart and Target and everything are being filled with Godzilla toys. He's losing his mind. Thank God I don't have to order them from Japan, man. <laughs> it takes four months to get here, and it's $150. Yeah, now you got to buy them all up and then hide them and then just that's dole them out little at a time. That's what my wife says. She's like, we should buy every one of them and then just wait for until Christmas. Because if you wait till Christmas, it'll probably be out of the stores. Yeah, you have to get them now. You have yeah. to jump on them. Well, I've got you something here that's really interesting. I know as much as everybody listening probably likes it as much as we do about, you know, ancient species and, and ancient history, the stuff that we like to cover. Uh, Lizzie Wade over at Science Mag left this, posted this up about a new species of ancient human unearthed in the Philippines. Den 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 Denisuvians? Well, we're yeah, well, kind of. Yeah, kind of. She writes that there's a strange new species that they says may have joined, may now have joined the human family. It was found in a cave on Luzon, the largest island in the Philippines. And it includes tiny molars suggesting that their owners were small. They have curved fingers and curved toe bones that, that kind of hint towards climbing of trees is what this is. That makes sense. They believe. Now it's called Homo luziensis or Luzonensis because it's in the Luzon Island, okay? It's in the Joe Lozon Island. The Joe Lozon, that's right. <laughs> They believe that they lived some fifty to 80,000 years ago. And it said, of course, this is when the world hosted multiple archaic humans, including what? Denisovians and Neanderthals. Mm -hmm. And when the uh, Homo sapiens may have been making its very first trips into Southeast Asia. Now, Adam Brum is an archaeologist at Griffith State University in Nathan, Australia. And he said there was a paper that was published uh, last week in Nature. It says that this is truly a sensational finding, and it sent shivers down my spine, talking about the ancient hominin that they found. And he says, they go into this. He wasn't quoted saying this, but they go into this in this article, is they kind of point towards the Hobbit of Floriensis, right? Mm, the floor right. is, in, yes. and that's in Indonesia. So they start talking about, now we're looking at like islands and, and the people that are on them, you know, and this, that, and the other. Jeremy De Silva is an expert on homo foot bones at Dartmouth, Dartmouth College. And, and it says that one thing is interesting, and, he, and I love this. One is interesting, two is a pattern. And that's what he's talking about is like, if it was only one of them, it's interesting. But now finding two of these small inhabitants of these species, different species, is giving us a pattern of what's going on. And he, and it says others are believing now that Southeast Asia these islands of it may have actually been a cradle of diversity for ancient humans like Floriensis and Lusiensis, and that they believe that they evolved small body sizes for the isolations on the island itself. So they haven't found it yet, but you remember they believe the <laughs> Hobbit was alive up till yeah, 13,000 yeah. years ago. And, that, and the land and the land between or the area between Australia and Southeast Asia was all above water. Oh, uh -huh, yeah. Just 12,000 years ago. Yeah. So there's no telling what. So if they're finding these, there, yeah. these are on the tops, uh, the, highest points. the highest points. That's right. So there could have been more underwater that's, of course, it's no longer there. But knowing now that those islands weren't created until the, the thawing of the last ice age, mm. 
or at least that's what's believed in there, is that it was a lot lower. They could have walked in between islands. They could have easily traversed in between there. They go in and dig into it, and they're talking about you know how they figured out the, the age of it and all this. Now, what's really interesting this is in the same layer, get a load of this, it says, in the same layer as the metatarsal that was found that the team discovered, they've also found five teeth from the upper right, the right upper jaw of the same individual and two isolated teeth, two finger bones, two toe bones, and a broken femur. And they said that the teeth show a unique mosaic of traits found separately in other homo species. It starts talking about the premolars. They're about the size of ours. But instead of a single root, they had two or three, which is a primitive feature. So the, apparently the molars are, it says these molars or the molars are much more modern with single roots, but incredibly small. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So incredible. They're only 10 millimeters long and eight millimeters across. So they are little bitty teeth. So these are like little bitty hominids that are like part us, part monkey. Like yeah, this could, wow. there's something along to this. Here's something too. That's interesting. It says the long curved fingers and toes resembles those of Australia. Fifth Pith- like <laughs> Lucy. God, that's a huge word, right? Australiopithecines, like Lucy. Oh, we don't need no fancy words. <laughs> that ain't yeah, no joke. Right? <laughs> this is a, her, an early human ancestor thought to have both walked upright and swung from trees. Now, Tracy Kivel is a paleoanthropologist. Let me do that one again. Hit me with that one again. We don't need no fancy words. There you go. It says it's a paleoanthropologist that uh, studies hand, hand bones at the University of Kent in Canterbury. Okay. Uh huh. I would hate that. That's your job. You're studying hand bones. Well, anyway, they talked to Tracy and said that there's a very strong indication of these bo- these finger bones of climbing. So it looks like we have a blend of the Hobbit, maybe even a smaller version, and it's but they're still but see I like the homo group, but they're also like tree climbing and you know I mean it's like yeah. they're specialized in an area. So. We're finding more and more species. More hominids. Exactly. That we realize that Homo sapien, like we are today, walked this planet with. Yeah, I remember as a kid them telling you that it was one gradual progression. I didn't know that it split. They didn't know it split. I know. That's crazy. They had no idea it split the way it did. (sighs) Because they're just, that's what's crazy. From what we've learned in school to what we know now is everything has changed. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. They didn't know anything. Just like we don't know anything now. <laughs> we just we think we do, but we don't know anything. No. Okay, so I hope you all enjoyed those. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I'm going to be discussing some more crazy haunted like retail stores that we discussed on one of the episodes. And what are you going to be chit-chatting with me about? I'm going to be speaking about the White Witch of Jamaica. Oh, holla. All right, let's take a quick break. We'll jump right back at it. You're listening to Expanded Perspectives. We are back, and we're yes. going to discuss some creepy stuff here. Uh, everyone loves going to the mall. The last place you want to go is to a haunted mall. Well, say everyone, I hate going to the mall. It used to be a thing when you were a teenager. When we were younger, we would go over there, and, and it's the only place you could get cool stuff. Yeah. Now cool stuff's everywhere. And people went to kind of hang out, too. I Let think. me ask you this, though. What happened to, it used to be a big mall, and everything's like strip malls. Yeah, right. You know, it used to be where you'd just walk door to, you know, room to room to room and room, and it was all a big deal. I don't know what changed. I don't know how it evolved, where malls just like, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to be the thing to go do anymore. Like, if I have to It's because you're a man. I think for girls- like a man. Or uh, boys that are into fashion, they like going to the mall because they like to try things on. Where I think like guys like you and me, I can just look at a picture. I'm like, yeah, I know what size I wear, jeans. Yeah, send them this way. Like yeah. I don't spend a whole lot of. And thought. I dress like a child anyway. Like that's I me. What yeah. am I, who am I trying to impress? No one. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. even if I did try to impress them, they wouldn't be impressed. So it'd be a waste of my time. Once you start talking to them, they'd just be like. Pfft. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I think you're onto something there. Well, there is a mall in Rockford, Illinois called the Cherryvale Mall, all right? Mm-hmm. It opened in the 70s, early 70s, 73 to be exact. Something about this mall doesn't set well with some of the folks that have been in there. It's actually been reported on that some of the employees have all... Now, this is something, when I read this, it makes me think... I, I, I've read this countless times since doing this show about reporting of the feeling of being watched or followed yeah, at yeah. night. I don't, it's hard for, look, it's hard for me to put any validity to that statement anymore because I've heard it so much and I've had it happen to me. Everybody, it's, 
we know for a fact you can tell when somebody's looking at you. They've done those studies. People yes. can tell. But you also know that you can amp yourself up with your mind, you know, and you can play 100%. tricks on yourself. So it's hard for me to go, okay, that right there, you know, proves that there's also some mm. creepy and going see, on. What you're, bring, what you're bringing up is exactly what, I, what I'm talking about whenever you watch like these Sasquatters who go out and they're looking for Bigfoot yeah. and they're in the dark and they have all this equipment and then they hear just like a rock, what sounds like a rock. Yeah. And they're like, oh, oh. Something's through. I just heard something throw something at us, and I'm like, yeah, because you got yourself amped up into thinking it's a bigfoot. It could have just been a falling pine cone, yeah, or an acorn, yeah, just a falling on its own, yeah, something. something, yeah. But instantly they're like, oh, it's, it's throwing stuff at me. It, it's just that's not enough proof. The same as the feeling of being watched or the yeah. feeling of uneasiness of being followed. To me, isn't enough proof when you say it. But what is enough proof? is when they start talking about what they found when they would come back to their work. Okay, see, now that's actual physical evidence. So it's closed up, it's locked up, they got cameras going, you know, you know you're not going to, nobody's breaking in, right? Yeah. yeah. They'd be displays dumped over, clothing would be scattered. Now, it's one thing to think if it fell over, because like we've all seen the crazy videos and stuff, like when the AC system kicks on, it makes it look like it's doing something, or, or they would later on find out that it right, might have yes. been something like that. No, they're talking about finding full displays dumped, clothing scattered everywhere they're talking about wild stuff they're like they said that they were talking about their stories of of like uh mannequin displays like maybe not on display maybe it's like say in the back somewhere to where they would have mannequins stored in different areas and all the mannequins would be down but he said it's not like it would be like if you had a bunch lined up and one fell it would right, knock like them all dominoes. over. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is where they're scattered about, and yet they're all knocked over. What was the movie where the guy was dating a mannequin? It's a mannequin. Is that the name of it? Yeah. I, I mean, that. is that the name of it? You used to have like, that T-shirt. I haven't seen that movie since like 1984. You're a liar. You got it in there on your on your. I DVR. bet if I watched it now, it probably would be horrible. Because I remember it being like pretty entertaining <laughs> as a, for the kid to watch God. it. <laughs> yeah. Some have even gone forth to say in this mall that when they've gone to the bathrooms that they go to open the door, you can't get the door open. Oh, and I don't mean like no. it's locked. I mean like they believe that it, something's holding it shut. Like it's not stuck. It's like you can feel a little give and something fighting back to keep you closed in the bathroom. Oh, I went to the mall one time and I had to go to the bathroom. And when I went in there, it smelled like the worst. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what does this I, have I to can't do even think. It? You're talking about the mall and being trapped in the bathroom. <laughs> I was only had the trapped in there for... 45 <laughs> seconds, however long it takes me to really, uh, to it completely drain my bladder, but it was freaking horrible. God, like, I can't God. imagine. Like something was gut shot in there? Like, ugh. Like the bog of eternal stench off Labyrinth. It even <laughs> sounded right. the same. I mean, the bog <laughs> of eternal stench. It's horrible. Like, I come out of there and physically, like, my shirt was... Like you'd been standing by a campfire? <laughs> it's like, yeah, like cigarette smoke. I mean, like, I had to throw those clothes away. It was bad. I feel bad for the poor fella that had to let that out. Because <laughs> it was like a rotted fetus in fetru, whatever they call it. <laughs> where they're like, you got a twin growing inside of you. Like, it just <laughs> rotted and came, finally came out. <laughs> People are just uh, gagging. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, and that, that's not the correct medical term. I don't know. It's fetus <laughs> Oh, you're something. kidding. You're kidding. Yeah, well, I, I, I don't. What you just said oh, no. is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> you can look it up. It's like fetus in V2 or something. I've heard him talk about it. You know, you know what I'm talking in about? In vitro? I don't know. I, that might be you it. You don't know? I'm surprised. No, I don't know, but I've heard it on a- We don't need no fancy <laughs> words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. John or Doyle, what's his name? Yeah, I don't Brett, no, I'm trying to remember the guy. Anyways, go on. You're okay. talking about the, the bathroom, being stuck in there. There's a force, a physical force stopping you from yeah. getting out. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. At that place. And that was, like I said, that's up there in Rockford, Illinois. Someone's seen Rockford. I think of the Rockford Files. Well, not a great show. Anyway, no, no, nothing here. Is this thing on? Yeah, no, no, I don't. I'm, I don't you never watched the Rockford Files? Uh-uh. No, well, he was a lawyer. James Garner. Yeah, I never watched that. Then there was another place up here. Now, this one is called the Coss, all right? The New Yorkers it would know about this. Apparently, it's in Soho. And this goes back for a while back where they talked that they was the, the COS retail store up there. I have another question. Sorry, I keep interrupting. Soho, and there's Soho and NoHo. Do you know that in New York, they pronounce Houston Street? They pronounce it, I mean, they pronounce Houston Street, Houston Street. I don't know why. When I was up there, I'm like, oh, yeah, Huff Houston Street. They're like, no, it's Houston. You're like, no, it's not. I'm like, no, it's Houston. I've never been to Houston, Texas. 
But they, they, yep, when they talk about like the football team, they'll call it the Houston. The Houston. I don't know. That's weird. Astros, but hmm. that's on Houston. I don't know. I just thought of that because you were what, saying What that. are we doing coming out when people pronouncing things wrong anyway? <laughs> <laughs> that's a Hello, good point. Hello, Pot. This that's, is Kettle. You're black. <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I mean, that's the whole thing. So apparently this place is haunted. They say that there was a uh, a body found. Like they believe that uh, before it was a, a, a build or before it was a uh, a store that there was a uh, a boarding house there. Uh huh. And that somebody in the boarding house was murdered there, and and that they found this, and that the person that did the murders was actually caught, and they talk about seeing this woman's ghost there. So there's a lot of stuff that talks about this, and apparently in the men's department of this store that it's back by the basement or something or it's in the basement of this old building and that they see a lot of creepy stuff that goes on in this store. Now, there's one that I have found here that you and I need to go to this place. It's called John K. King's Used and Rare Books. It's in Detroit, and it's like a three-story building, and it looks like you're walking into like a library at Harry Potter World or something. For real? You can go on YouTube. I urge everyone to go on YouTube and pull up John K. King's Used and Rare Books. You got to go look at it, don't you? You're going crazy. I'm looking, yeah, I'm trying to find it. Anyways, continue. The whole thing, it is like, apparently it's one of the greatest, if not the greatest bookstores in the world. Like he collects the oldest, wildest, you know, old school books. So they've interviewed him multiple times. And I'm in this building, it's been there for a while. Decades, I believe it's been going on with the crazy stuff that happens there. But John K. King, the man that owns it, he says that back when he had some items, he says was belonging to a woman who committed suicide. And he said that we brought it, you know, all this stuff in. He said soon after he bought all this stuff and brought it in, these books, he said that the employees there started saying that they started hearing doors slamming. They started hearing footsteps. And he said, but whenever we took the things that we had bought from the estate sale and moved it out of the building, it all went away. Yeah. Yeah. Now, he said nothing had happened ever again after that. That was anything that he said that was weird. He goes, now, and he's been even said this. He said, it doesn't mean she's not there, but he said, I just haven't noticed her. Now, there's also, they had a local psychic come in there from Detroit to go in there and kept saying that in the bookstore, said they she believes that the bookstore is still an active area for spirits and that there may be uh, what she said was a former employee that had passed away who may still be working in the basement down there is what she had said. So right. uh, did you find it? Yeah. Oh yeah. I was looking Tell me you don't want to go there. Yeah, man. It looks really cool. It looks great. Right. So I would, tr- like I say, if you haven't been <laughs> and you live in Detroit, you should go. But uh, if you haven't seen it, look up John K King used in rare books. So that's another one. So now it brings me to the diamond center and I guess it's actually dimmond, but it's D I M O N D diamond dimmond, but it's the, the center in Anchorage, Alaska. Okay. Now, I've never been, and I have to go to Alaska. I have to go. Don't do it on a cruise, though. No, no. We've got some friends up there, and I've got some cousins that live outside of Anchorage, and we just I just need to go. I just I would love it up there. But apparently, that when the contractors got started to put this building up, they probably didn't realize what they were doing, but they believed that it was a very old an ancient sacred burial ground that when they built this diamond center in anchorage that's what they did and that when they started construction on the building it was on the the remains of the the native americans in that area all right uh-huh. the native alaskans in that area and while they were doing the digging and the unearthing and all that stuff for the piers and all that stuff they uncovered some graves and some remains some human remains now the story goes that they attempted to keep it all together, to try to gather it all up, that they actually found tiny graves. So it may have been of like children or what, but they found a lot of these and they tried to keep them up, right? Uh-huh. And keep them all separate. They tried to do the right thing. They tried to bring in the people. Let's get it all done. Let's let's make sure we're moving everything where it needs to be moved so we can build this and, you know, get it back to wherever it's, they're trying to do the whole thing. It sounds though, like they did it as much as they could, but there's always complaints, of course, but if you want to trace it back to something, it sounds like they did it as much as they could, but they didn't really slow down the building. So they got the ones that were like the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Right, we right. see those, but they yeah. may have covered up another dozen while they were doing it because they didn't really want to 
really delay the building any more than it was already being delayed. So they completed this construction in 2002. Now, it says that some of the original buildings for this whole area was back in 1977 is what it started from. But what they had all done and built up started and was ended in 2002. And it became the largest enclosed mall in the state of Alaska. Had over 200 stores and four over four floors, theaters, skating rinks, arcades, bowling alley, gyms. You know, it had everything, right? We're ready to rock and roll. It also had ghosts. <laughs> and they believe it was the ghost of these people that were disturbed. And it wasn't long until it, the word got out and everybody started going, oh, yeah, you want to have some real paranormal wildness. You need to go down to the mall. You need to go down there. And they said it got so bad. There's reports that it got so bad that when it started getting, you know, short hours, late at nights and stuff, people would only go shop there in the daylight. Like it would legitly turn into a ghost town as it got dark. I don't because, blame them. Because what they started reporting hearing was drums and flute music. I hate flutes. I like that flute music. I hate flutes. I mean, that's that's why I don't like Jethro Tull. I don't like any of that stuff with the tuba or pan. I don't like pan. But you don't like the Native American flute music? I don't think I'm familiar with that. You, I'll have to have you listen to some. It's pretty jam up. I saw some uh, uh, Mongolian death metal or something. Yeah, I saw uh, the Who cool. or the Hue or however it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, it's pretty awesome. Uh, so they were talking about hearing the drums and the flute music. And then they started having where more and more strange things started going on. Then they said that it would be unexplained they say that there was the whole skating rink thawed out the ice rink inside just apparently was all completely thawed. They lost the entire thing. They were saying, Oh, well it's an, you know, Oh, we had an accident. It's unexplained. It must be the, the spirits are like, yeah, or it could have been shoddy craftsmanship, you know, guys in a hurry or whatnot. But that's, that's not the part that I was getting at. What I was getting at is that while that was going on, apparently there was a skating rink manager, young man in his early 20s, was trying to work in the compressor compressor room down there, and he died of asphyxiation from that the, the leak of refrigerant in that room. And there's also something, apparently there was some other people working in there, like at the, uh, the health club, and that some of them almost drowned while they were working in and around the pool. They said that uh, overall there was like several people because of this compressor leak, People were injured. People were hospitalized. This whole thing, nobody could ever understand. So like this compressor leak come out of nowhere, wiped out a bunch of people. They couldn't figure it out. But it still doesn't mean that it's due to ghosts, like That's a compressor right. yeah. leak. I got you. But when they started hearing really, really strange things and, you know, like we said, the drums and that, it doesn't mean that that's one thing. But the drums and the flute music is completely different from an, from an AC compressor. Yeah, right? it would not sound like that. Then these people started getting these, you're going to love this, reports of seeing wolves, a pack of wolves roaming in the night, the halls and the walkways and pathways inside that mall. And also some of the security guards would report seeing Native American peoples like in their war dress or in all of their dress wow. and the wolves in the <clears throat> halls and moving through just like like it's they've pulled them up and put them back in from time out of nowhere. Yeah, that's crazy, right? It's almost like a yeah. um, like a time slip. Like you're viewing something that would like say a pack yes. had once walked through there. Yeah, that's cool. Then they said that people, some of the people that were even working in there, said they would see an old woman. Some said that they saw a very tall man, and then some reported seeing a child, a young child that appeared to be lost, like constantly in fear, constantly looking like didn't know oh, where geez. they were at. Yeah. They said that even in certain parts of it, of that mall, you would go into certain darker back areas, you would hear hissing. People said they felt a sense of dread, that everything felt darker, that it felt evil, and that you could feel scratches, pokes, and pinches on your body if you would go into certain no, areas no. of this mall. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. So that one right there, to me, takes the cake of all the rest of anything haunted. Like it's one thing to have stuff moved around. It's one thing to have your clothes scattered about. It's one thing to have hearing footsteps. It's a whole nother ball game when you got a ghostly pack of wolves, yeah, yeah. a ghostly war party of native Americans and uh, some dark entity slipping and sliding around and they're pinching and poking on you. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not down with that. So anyway, that's a few more of the haunted retail shops and we've received stories 
from some of y'all that yeah. have sent it to us of y'all's haunted retail stuff. I'm going to have to touch base on too on one of the shows. Yeah, we should. We've we got should some really interesting stories that they sent where people have worked in anywhere where it was haunted. So if you've worked anywhere, any of your jobs that if you're working now where it's haunted or if where you did and it was haunted, send us those stories. I love the idea of people having these strange occurrences while you're at work. Cause it's one thing, right? People always talk about living there. It's another thing when you have to go to work and then you just kind of get used to it. Like, Oh, that's Henry. He's just back there. He's just somebody that used to be here and died years and years ago. And we just yeah, know he's yeah. back there. You know, it's just an interesting I wouldn't thing. want to do that because like, no. you know, you're say you have the late shift and you're there by yourself and you got to go check this back gate. But that's where we talk about you get that feeling of dread. And yeah. it seems like you could your mind can trick you. If you didn't know, your mind can trick you. I I agree. I know grown men that are still kind of scared to walk through the woods at night. Yeah. Yeah. They <laughs> they always like leave a little early or they wait till the sun comes up before they go out. <laughs> yeah, 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 I've known yeah. a few of guys like that. Not to say that I have not been scared to death before while I've been out in the woods. Uh, Any man that says he wasn't's a liar. That's exactly right. Well, I'm glad you brought up these hauntings because this is has a haunting twist to it. Um this is a very strange story. I've had it saved and I was just waiting for a good time to release it. And um with you bringing up the hauntings today, I was like, yeah, that'd be perfect. Anyways, I think you're going to like this, Cam. This is a strange story. But supposedly it's very, very real, and it comes from the Caribbean, uh, Jamaica to be exact. It's a story about a strange little English woman who lived on this luxurious sugar plantation, a huge one. This was a person that everyone, all the locals anyways, thought that they were a successful business owner, and she was, but uh, she also had a dark side. Uh, she had some dark secrets, including witchcraft and voodoo. And the practicing of dark magic. So let's start at the beginning. Now, this is located in Montego Bay, Jamaica. And this is where the plantation was located. And it was called the Rose Hall Great House or the Rose Hall Plantation. And some people just called it Rose Hall. But this place was super fancy. It had all the bells and whistles and stuff, you know. And the house was originally constructed, they say, in the 1770s. And it was about 4,000 square feet. Now, I know what you're going to say. 4,000 square feet. That's no mansion. But you got to remember this took place when this thing was built. It was the late 1770s. Back then, people were living in lean-to shacks. Mm -hmm. I think if you even had like an 850 square foot house, you were balling, right? You were doing good. So a 4,000 square foot house, I know today's standards, it doesn't seem like much. But back then, that was very large and and people would call it the big house kind of reminds me of uh django yeah when they're like, you call that the big house yeah. because that's the biggest house <laughs> that's the big house. the girl she's good on the yeah. tour big daddy yeah big she's daddy's house that's yeah. big daddy's house yeah it's because he lives there yeah <laughs> you're like well, okay um but this place was opulent it had tall vaulted ceilings it had tons of custom trim work the fancy silk wallpaper these huge chandeliers i mean it was decked out it was how big were they Huge. <laughs> and uh, it was actually once owned by a man named John Palmer. And this particular plantation was the one, it was one of the largest sugar plantations in all of Jamaica. And this John Palmer, the guy that owned this plantation, has to do with the story of the, the little English woman because their paths cross and they get married. Now, this woman that this story is about, her name was Annie Patterson. And she and her past and stuff are herself are a little bit clouded in mystery. You have to remember that back when this happened, they didn't keep the best records, uh, especially like where people were born, birth certificates, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, I'm sure they tried to write it down, but I mean, you know, it was a different day. It wasn't like you could just store it in a cloud somewhere. But uh, in those days, by most accounts, she was claimed to have been born on the island of Haiti with immigrant parents. Uh, with her father, who's from um, from England, and her mother was from Ireland, but other story, uh, other stories about her say that she arrived in the country from England when she was just a small child. That she wasn't, in fact, born in Haiti. Um, and there's other there's other rumors that are, as she a child, her parents died of the yellow fever, and whatever the case may be. The story of her past, the the part that's not contested, is the fact that she was raised by a nanny. And they say at those days, the nanny would have been like a slave, right? Mm -hmm. And they said they are quite sure, this is what the stories claim, that that nanny taught that little girl the dark arts, taught that little girl about voodoo, casting spells, making 
what do they call the doll? Voodoo dolls. Yeah, there can, you go. Put, you know, practicing witchcraft. She taught this little girl that. Now, it you think it would be in a way of getting back at her family? I don't know. Maybe. See, it doesn't really get into those stories. Makes you think, though. Yeah. Um, they said that from a very early age, this little girl was already practicing voodoo and black magic. And not only was she practicing voodoo, but many locals claimed that she was very good at it. She had a knack for the dark side. Let's just say she had a knack for the dark side of the force, as they would say. But you might be onto something. Like maybe that was the the nanny's plan the whole time. Yeah, is I'm going to corrupt this guy's daughter, right? This is going to hold me a slave. I'll show him. I don't know. Maybe they were close. Maybe they were just friendly. And she's like, I'm going to give this girl these powers. I'm going to pass this on down because this is something that she's going to need to know. Who knows? Yeah. But when she was 18 years old, that's when Annie supposedly met the owner of the Rose Hall Plantation, and who, like I mentioned before, was a guy named John Palmer. Now, they say after just a few weeks, they were married, and she became Annie Palmer. Well, as the story goes, the honeymoon didn't last long. And very quickly, John began to abuse and beat Annie. And they said Not there a was good a move. lot of cases of infidelity from both partners, but especially Annie's. They said Annie was said to take many lovers into her bed, with some of them being the slaves from the Rose Hall Plantation. Now, the story goes that one day, old John... Allegedly walked in, uh, her during one of these erotic episodes, uh, and you can imagine he was not pleased, right? His wife is sleeping with one of the slaves from mm-hmm. the plantation, and apparently this has been going on for a while. Not just with that one fella, but lots of fellas, right? So it doesn't ever talk about if she was doing this on purpose because he was the beatings he gave her. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, if you were a woman, and you got to remember the time period. It's not like today. We didn't have no feminist movements. Women were probably just a, a step ahead. Up from the slavery and the, and the guys, yeah. Mr. Patterson's mind, and uh, our Palmer, I'm sorry. So maybe when he was cheating on her, maybe when he was beating on her, getting liquored up and saying hateful things to her, what's the best way to get him back other than to kill him? Like, you really want to hurt him. Yeah, she don't want to kill him. She wants to hurt him. Right. So I'm yeah. going to let him catch me doing what I've been doing. Yeah. You know, and so I think that was a lot, lot of it. Um, but he wasn't happy about this. Not, like I said, not for just heard of the fact that she was cheating on him, but who it was with. But in his anger, they said that he beat her to within in, within an inch of her life. But at the time when he was giving her this beating, and I'm sure all before this, he didn't know that she was a, ve- a voodoo practitioner. He didn't know none of that. At yeah, the time. That's some information that you really kind of need to know. And not just was Annie a voodoo practitioner, but a very powerful voodoo priestess. An evil witch, in other words. And an evil witch, Cam, is not someone you want to cross. Not who you want to lay your hands on. Right? What's the saying? Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. I mean, <sighs> that ain't no now joke. this one not just is mean and hateful and pissed. She also knows spells. She has a way of putting the hurt on you. Right. So, anyways, to make a long story shorter. Not like, not, we're not saying you should hit a woman. You should never hit a no, woman. No, 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 I'm not saying that. But you definitely should never hit a woman that knows voodoo. <laughs> Voodoo? (laughs) Yeah. You should never lay your hands on a voodoo priestess. Anyways, to make a a long story short, let's just say John didn't have very long to live. (laughs) So once she recovered from this beating, she healed up. Yeah. They said it wasn't very long after that that somebody found old John dead. Now, Good. The autopsy said that he was poisoned. But there are many in the area that say, no, he wasn't poisoned. It was a voodoo curse that killed old John. But in the end, no one really knows. Anyways, one of the th- first word th- weird things that stuck out to me is you would think with John dropping dead shortly after the beating he gave his old lady that the local police would consider Annie as a prime suspect in the murder of her yeah. husband, John yeah. Palmer. But no, they didn't do anything. She was never She was never charged with anything. She was never investigated in the death whatsoever. Really? She... She just was left alone. So it begins to make you wonder, did the local police already know that she was into voodoo? Because remember, this is in Jamaica at that time. They were just people that were brought over from Africa. Well, and, and let me ask and, you this. And they were voodoo practitioners. So uh, you would probably be able to recognize. I don't know what they do. If she had a cow tongue nailed to the front door. Well, and especially if she grew up there in the area and then she, this guy showed up and then married her. They've known her since her whole life. You know what I mean? Yeah, you that's could, you exactly say right. these, the, yeah. the officers there have known her her whole life. That's right. And they know who raised her. 
and then they probably know that this guy has beat her more than once. I'm sure. And I, they, they don't like it, but there's nothing they can do about it. So when he shows up, or the he shows up dead, turns up dead, they're like, eh, we didn't really lose anything. Either that or just another piece of crap wife beater. They were afraid dead, to. Like, oh, well. They were afraid to incarcerate her because then, then she could turn the voodoo on them. Oh, yeah. They're like, yeah. That's definitely look the other way no, material. There's nothing to see here. Like, right, are, you, just, are you good? You're good now? All right. On. We're just not even going to mess with this. This yeah. guy deserved what he got. Yeah. So he says Annie was never charged or investigated in the death. And indeed, she went on to inherit the entire estate and plantation, making her one of the richest and most influential women in the country of Jamaica at that time. Hmm. Um, but it wouldn't last long. Annie was soon married again. In fact, she was married two more. She was married two more times, and both of those husbands also wound up dead. They lay their hands on her. I don't know. It doesn't get into too much detail about that, but I have a feeling that anytime they didn't just do what she wanted. Now that she knows that this stuff is what working, she can do. Yeah, if you cross her, you're you're done. And they said that um, at this time, the slaves on the plantation, of which there was about two thousand, whoa, that, that worked there. They began to suspect her of being a voodoo priestess that she was, and it was confirmed. And they said that around this time, many of the slaves started complaining that she treated them far worse than John ever did, her husband. Really? And uh, they said she was notorious for handing out horrendous punishments and even executions for even minor infractions. And before long, she had garnered a new nickname among the slaves, who began calling her the White Witch of Rose Hall. Well, the name stuck. And to this day, you can still go to Jamaica over there near Montego Bay and you can find the actual White Witch of Rose Hall. She's famous and a local legend around there. But they said that for the most part, her skill with the dark arts kept her safe and it instilled fear. But unfortunately for her, she was about to meet her match. Annie's downfall would come in the form of one of her slave lovers, right? This guy's name was Taku, T-A-K-O-O. And according to the tale, he too had quite an affinity for voodoo magic. In fact, he too was well trained in the dark arts, Cam. That's right. This guy is a warlock oh, in voodoo magic, is right? So this better. is this is a Annie's very high up in the voodoo. She knows a lot of spells. She's powerful. She's ruling over this plantation. Mm -hmm. She's still messing around with the help, and she finds herself a lover named Taku. But unbeknownst to her, she didn't know that this guy secretly knows all about voodoo and black magic because he himself is a powerful, whatever you want to call him, wizard, yeah, warlock. What's the, what's the opposite? What's the male version of a witch? Right? I think it's a warlock. I think so. Yeah. Well, anyways. It is today. <laughs> right. So they said, as the story goes, that apparently one of his family members was targeted by Annie for some meaningless infraction that he had committed. So, you know, his, you got to know back then the slaves, the, fam the whole families lived there, right? They yeah. lived and worked there, all of them. Well, so Annie got, you know, Something sticking in her crawl. She's all mad and singles out this guy's relative and starts, I guess, puts a spell or a hex or a curse or whatever you want to call it on his cousin. And he's like, no, nah, I ain't having it. It ain't going down like nah, that today, She doesn't player. know that. But Taku, he, he doesn't like it. And so he whipped up his own curse and he put it on Annie. Now, his purse, they say, wasn't strong enough to kill her outright, but it was enough to weaken her. So he put this curse on her. She became short-winded and weak, and then he snuck into the big house, and he strangled her to death. Good on him. Yep. Then he took her body and placed it in a coffin, and then used some sort of magical spell to keep her spirit confined so that she couldn't roam the island in death. Because apparently in voodoo, you've got to be careful of somebody, because even after you kill them, they might come back. And kill you. And kill you. So this is like a never-ending... Man, I'm glad I never got involved in voodoo. <laughs> well... As the story goes, Taku must have messed up. It didn't work. Either his spell or rituals were done incorrectly, or they didn't work, or Annie was just more powerful than Taku because this wasn't the last time anybody saw old Annie. Oh, no. So, with her dead, all the slaves, they moved on. They were free at last. They had no master, so the big house and the whole plantation was eventually abandoned. And the house fell into disrepair, as most homes do when they're not lived on. And sorry, you've talked about that before. Yeah, yeah. Um, the home eventually got the reputation for being haunted. So you can imagine this old, big, decrepit-looking house needs paints falling apart. And of course, with all the stories of the the previous owners, the place kind of took on 
a, a good place for urban legends to be generated, right? You yeah. can always start the story out there. But uh, there are people that reported seeing strange paranormal events in and on and around that plantation. Um, people saw uh, apparitions, they say, decked out in green velvet, sometimes riding a horse. Um, they've seen glowing orbs. They've seen shadow figures. People have reported unexplained noises. And they've even had a few sightings of what looks like gargoyles uh, in and around there. And this went on into the 1960s when a former Miss USA named Michelle Rollins bought, bought the property. And she did what any woman would do when you buy a new house. She totally renovated it, right? But apparently, even after all the renovations were done, the house is looking good again. The hauntings apparently persisted so bad that she eventually couldn't even live in there anymore. And she moved out. Now, it's still there. It's open to the public, I believe. It's a tourist destination now, and it's claimed to be the most haunted place on all of Jamaica. And uh, so that's the story. Of the White Witch. Of the White Witch of Jamaica. Uh, so it, she's just basically stuck or trapped there. I, I guess so. People still see her spirit sometimes. I, it, pe some people think that, you know, before it was renovated, of course, now, you know, it's like a museum. Now people go there to see it, kind of like yeah. I did with the Winchester House. But yeah. back in the day... They thought that uh, a lot of people would, would travel there who people who were practicing with voodoo thought that they could get a little bit more energy or something when they were doing it at the plantation. I, I don't know what, I mean, I don't, I don't fool with that stuff. The only thing I know voodoo. about voodoo is like when I was in New Orleans. Marie Laveau. Um, That's what everybody knows about voodoo in the States. If you went in there, there was a bunch of these specialty shops and I remember looking at like all these spells and stuff and it seemed really cool to me as a kid. So You didn't buy any spells? I think my brother did. Why am I not surprised? I don't remember what I bought. I got something else, but I remember him. Well, man, I want that. Spell. You got a cold sore when you were there. That's what you got. <laughs> we were children. Um, anyways, I hope you like that. Let's take a break. You're listening to Expanded Perspectives. And we're back with Expanded Perspectives. Yeah, man. Lots of stories about hauntings. And crazy voodoo. Crazy and witches and, and a wizard warlock battle. I mean, isn't that crazy? She cast a spell. I put a guns. spell on you. Yeah, and then she cast one on her lover, who she didn't know, also practiced black magic, voodoo, whatever, so ended up getting her in the end. I'm looking it up to make sure, and it says a warlock is a person, usually a man, who uses magic, especially against others, compared to yeah. wizard or sorcerer. Yeah, right? And so that's what I thought. That's the male version of the witch is a warlock Imagine, or a witcher. What is this here? I, I wonder know. how loud it was when the warlock and the witch were getting it on. I mean, can you summon like, instead Oh yeah, of, of course I can summon. Wait, oh, wait, <laughs> I mean, like, instead of like, instead of taking Cialis or something, you could just use like a, a voodoo spell. <laughs> Cause I remember in that shop, they had all kinds of crazy stuff. Like this spell would help you, you know, get out of school early. And I mean, it was just crazy <laughs> stuff. It seems preposterous, and it probably was. It might have been more of like a gag shot, but I know when I was a kid, I thought it was for real. Now they've got something here too. Let's see if I can pronounce this. Uh, this is for a Haitian voodoo priest, male. Uh, go ahead with the pronunciation, please. A hoongan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hoongan. Yeah, that's those videos with the guys driving the cars really no. fast. You ever seen that? Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Drifting and stuff. This is a female priest. Is known as a mambo. Yeah, that's what it's saying Mambo. here. Mambo number five. Yeah, that's for <laughs> Haitian voodoo. So I guess- Oh, it's, there's different types based on what island I'm you're assuming on? that's what it is here. Yeah, Haitian voodoo has mythology and it breaks it all down. Yeah, this is this is creepy. I'd like to go to Jamaica. My wife's been. I've never been to Jamaica. I don't think I'd want to go to Haiti. No. I don't know why. I don't know that I want to go to any of them. I don't know. <laughs> right around here looks hey, pretty nice. Hey, man. Yeah. You wouldn't like to go look at the coffee plantations and stuff? What was it that one friend of ours, when he went down to Jamaica, he, they actually stopped him to see if he had had any drugs on him when he got off the plane? Yeah, oh, goes, yeah, that was... It was Matt, and he said, who brings drugs to Jamaica? Yeah, right? That's like reverse <laughs> trading. You, know, like, you don't bring drugs to Jamaica. You don't bring sand to the beach. What's the matter with you? My dad told me that when they got off, uh, they went on a cruise that stopped in Jamaica, and when he was getting off the boat, there were dudes literally riding underneath the plank on jet skis trying to sell blow. <laughs> and it's like, even if I wanted it, you think I'm going to buy it in broad daylight? <laughs> yeah, right. How big does a trap have to look for you to get caught? You know what I mean? Oh, you want some blow mm -hmm. oh, All I can think of is like Mark for death. <laughs> Scroofus. Bruno Scroofus. You don't know no Scroofus. Find him yourself. And then he like jumps out the window. Yeah. Mark for death was awesome. 
It was a great film. I can still watch that and probably chuckle. I think I'm going to. I watched Take Lone Wolf and McQuaid all Who? the time. Lone Wolf and McQuaid. Oh, no. With Chuck I've Norris? Se- I've se- oh, I've seen it. I haven't Dude, seen it Dude, it's on time. Amazon Prime. I haven't seen that in a long time. It's a great film. When he's fighting David Carradine. March for Death is pretty dope. I have to admit. Steven Seagal in his prime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, is, that, is. that guy's still making movies. Love him or hate him, he's made like 98 movies. I mean, he's grinding them out. If you look on certain like have Netflix, you you'll see like he's making like six a year. You've seen how much they have to speed it up to make him look fast oh, now? Yeah. And he is he's a little heavy. Yeah, you'd think if you were going to keep doing it, you'd stay in good shape. I'm going to tell you this, though. I'm going to buy me some of them yellow shooter's glasses and just start wearing them around <laughs> like that. Or the fact that he used to try to go to the UFC uh, locker rooms and try to give advice. He was giving it to Anderson Silva. He loves to give it. He didn't give it to John John. John Joe shut the door in his face <laughs> yeah. and locked it. So yeah. I don't need no help. Get out of here. Hey, Grandpa, <laughs> yeah. get on out of here. Yeah. This ain't our first harvest. Was it? Was a grandpa? <laughs> yeah. Was yeah. Thanks, grandpa. I've been smoking for four harvests now, yeah. so I think I'm good <laughs> from year one. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, man. Who's the other guy that? Uh, oh, played on Roseanne. He played in what's John Goodman. It? John Goodman. Remember in The Big Lebowski, where he plays like Walter, oh, yeah. and he wears the shooting glasses all the time. <laughs> yeah, I think that means you're about half crazy if you wear those shooting glasses all the time. I don't have any. I'm gonna have to get some. I, I wear normal glasses, so I don't really need shooter yeah, glasses. I just keep no wearing. The I've same got ones. mine over here. My read. I'm gonna have to actually go get real ones now. The readers have done a good job up until now, and I think I'm slowly losing it. <clears throat> I, I don't even want to admit it this, but I I almost need a different pair because if anything real close, I don't like, and if anything's real far, I can't see real good either. So I'm pretty much just falling apart. Dude, you are done. Remember all the hell you used to give people that wore glasses? You used to tell them that I, I their eyes were dumb. <laughs> that was joking around, but yeah. I didn't understand. No, you it. weren't. You meant part of you that. You know the sad thing is, is I probably needed glasses when I was making then. that comment. <laughs> My parents never took me to see an eye doctor. I mean, I remember you going to school nurse. You could pass that, but you could. I mean, it's not that hard. Everybody used to go in there like the week before and write it down and then hand it out. And this is everybody like read it. Everybody made a one hundred on it because that's how kids are like in prison. Yeah. Do they, do they even do that in school No, anymore? are you kidding? There's yeah. no way. I, I can't believe that uh, they don't teach cursive anymore. Nothing. I so how do you sign like that. a check in print? You don't sign in print, do you? You just made how old you sound out there talking about a check. Who signs a check anymore? Uh, well, it's, you know, my wife, when she was working, she had a girl in there that was about 22, 23, and she didn't know how to fill out a check. My wife was like, what are you talking about? <clears throat> I had to show her. I'm, I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'm not surprised. But that's, I bet you I only write about four checks a month now. I bet your wife writes a lot more than that. No, debit card. <laughs> right. All the way. All the way. Oh, you want to hear the, what's even more ridiculous? So, like, we were going to a baseball tournament this weekend. I was looking at places to eat, and I was like, oh, man, I think I might want to go there. My wife chimes up. She's like, no, I don't really want to go there. And I'm like, you went to Papacitos today. You went to like the Olive Garden for my dad's birthday on Wednesday. I didn't get to go to do any of those because I was busy working. busy working or at baseball. Yeah. And now yeah. I suggest a place to eat and they don't want to go because they've already been. They don't care about you, dad. I'm like, yeah. And I bought the meal too. Yeah. But <laughs> No, 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 it doesn't matter. You're going to eat what she tells you to eat. I guess. And you're going to enjoy it. Right, that's ridiculous. Man. I think she was kind of half joking around. No respect. Getting no, no right, respect. I felt like it was at Rodney Danger. Yeah, you said no that. respect. I get no respect. I get no respect. But it's supposed to be beautiful weather this weekend, so finally. We've been rained out every week yep. for four weeks. We're finally, well, one of the weeks was Easter. Happy Easter, everyone. But uh, we're finally getting the play, and it looks like the weather's going to be fantastic. It's not quite summer yet. Perfectly, perfect, perfect spring weather. weather so yep. I'm going to try to enjoy it, because this will probably be the only one of the year where it's really nice. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You'll hear me in the upcoming episodes crying about how hot it is. Oh, for sure. What do you got going on? Uh, you said you had a barbecue or something to go yeah, to. Yeah, I got a barbecue to go to, and I'm going to have to mow. Now that when it's finally cut loose, the grass is going crazy, so I'm going to have to mow. But I really don't have any big plans this weekend. You going to the movies to see Avengers Endgame? Or? I might. My daughter went. She's already went to see oh, it she's already seen stuff. It? Yeah, she saw What's it. the other one? That's There's like a horror movie out. La Lorena? I think you did she, a- Is that out? I think so. La Llorona. Something like that. Yeah. I remember you I covered that. I don't know. I haven't been to the movies in a while. I just, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to be doing. I would be, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure I have, my wife has something for me to help her do. Like, you've I been think watching she's them, flowers. You've been watching Game of Thrones? I've been watching Game of Thrones and I started the new series on Amazon called Hannah. Hannah. Hannah Montana. That's not Pretty new. good. Yeah, it's pretty good. All right. Um, well, I hope everybody out there has a good week. If you have any stories of your own you'd like to share with me and Cam, you can email the show at expandedperspectives at yahoo.com. 
You can call the show 817-945-3828. And uh, you can also sign up for Elite on the website. Go to expandedperspectives.com. Click on the Elite tab, sign up. It's $5 to get access to our entire back catalog, which is like four years worth of shows. And uh, you'll get extra content every month. Me and Cam are about to release a whole bunch of new ones. Uh, we've had we've mentioned it before. There's been some te- technical difficulties over there. I screwed up some stuff pretty bad. But so. um, <clears throat> uh, it's, yeah, me too. It's <laughs> look, it's shocking that it's been working for six years. But yeah. Anyways, we've we've had to scrap some of those and clear up some new ones. So anyways, just email Mary if you have any problems. Till next time, I'm Kyle Filson. He's Cam Hale. Peace, y'all.